Now that we have discussed the key terms used, we will now introduce you to some of the key tools and techniques of applying outcomes focused planning. Outcomes planning can be distilled into several key steps. The first, first step involves understanding the current problems that need to be addressed and the risks of not addressing them. This is essentially a situation analysis of what needs to be changed. So we're looking at the size and scale of the problem, the current behaviours and activities, um, the current awareness and knowledge and attitudes towards what's going on. Um, we'll also look at this stage at reach and activities. And it's actually only by understanding where you are now that you can think about where you want to improve things in the future. Step two involves developing an outcomes chain or logic model which articulates the outcomes that will be achieved and the means by which this will be undertaken. Indeed, you may hear the term theory of change. However, do not be intimidated by this term as essentially all it means is the links between aspects of the intervention and outcomes. So developing a theory of change is simply the rationale and plausibility of how the programme will work based on the available evidence and programme knowledge. It is really about developing a hypothesis for your work, linking planned activities to intended outcomes. The theory of change essentially explains how and why an intervention is expected to work. So it is really about cause and effect. An example of this in relation to smoking will be revis revisited soon in the presentation. This step involves checking the chain for plausibility in terms of the risks, assumptions and evidence that we have to back up what our plans are saying. What we're seeing here is what evidence do we have to support the rationale behind our plan. This step moves us to, on to constructing a plan based on the outcomes chain and logic model. This plan is essentially a plan of action based, where possible, on the evidence of what works and actually may involve the development of several chains which can be referred to as nested models and includes considerations of gaps in evidence and a monitoring and evaluation plan that will allow us to monitor progress towards outcomes. At this stage it's important to undertake data collection to evidence the change towards the outcomes. This section is going to be revisited in the fourth presentation in the series. The final step is to use the information from the monitoring and or evaluation to assess whether outcomes have been achieved and to learn about whether and how plans need to be modified to improve performance for the future. This slide gives you an example of a logic model. A logic model maps out activities which can be undertaken and the population groups to be targeted to achieve a desired outcome. A logic model can be illustrated as a diagram with text with directional arrows that show the relationships among elements of a programme and the outcomes to be achieved. Logic models therefore help in planning programmes and in defining how to measure the success of the programme. Sometimes you might see a logic model represented like this which doesn't include outputs explicitly within the model, i.e. after the activity stage. This slide is here to illustrate the point that you may see others using slightly different ways of representing a logic model, and this should be informed by the purpose of the model itself. However, reflecting on what was said earlier about developing a theory of change, those using logic models as part of outcomes planning will follow a similar process, i.e agreeing what the problem is to be addressed and the means by which it will be addressed. In this model you will see that some of the arrows are numbered and these numbers correspond with evidence in order to strengthen the link within the chain. This will be discussed further in the next presentation. At a point of principle however, it is, point, it is important to remember that logic models are subject to change and the word model doesn't really accurately represent what logic models are there to do. They can change in light of evidence. The links in the chain should be always checked at regular intervals for plausibility based on the evidence that we have. A multiple results chain can be used to summarise the information in the logic models. 
and highlight key contribution of different sectors to health improvement outcomes. You may want to make the contribution of key partners explicit by developing a multiple results chain. It's also a tool to get partnerships sign up to the vision and the process. So if any partner fails to undertake the activities they've agreed to, this can have implications for the achievement of the outcomes. It's therefore important to review progress at regular intervals to ensure that the programme or project remains on track. This table is a template of an outcomes plan which allows for consideration of the indicators and the evidence that will be required for each level of outcomes. It is also a way to capture the sources of evidence and to articulate who is responsible for collecting data. More details on monitoring and evaluation will be provided in the next presentation in the series. So in summary, there are a number of key steps to outcomes planning and we've got a range of tools and techniques which can be applied to help navigate towards the outcomes. So for example, we can use logic models, results chains, outcomes plan.